Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone Rise of Shadows cards have all been revealed and it's theory crafting time. In this video I'm going to take a look at Shaman. First I take a brief look at the Shaman card, some major neutral cards that Shaman is going to use and then I have four theory crafted Shaman decks for you. A quick recap on the Shaman cards. Shaman is getting support for three different archetypes. It's getting support for this Murloc decks, it's getting support for very heavy value-oriented control decks, and with McMurphy it's getting support for some kind of combo mana cheating decks. So those are the types of decks that you can expect from Shaman for Rise of Shadows. As for the individual cards, Shaman did get a new healing spell in the end, and that was a little bit of a worry for Shaman. Healing was going out, how is Shaman going to heal? Well, which is brew is one of the answers. Two mana, restore four health, echo. This is echo. They just don't use the keyword anymore because Blizzard. But yeah, okay, decent enough healing spell. Then there's yet another evolve effect, this time for zero mana, but not repeatable. Probably useless. Then this card, this card is this card is insane. Soul of the Murloc. It's better than Soul of the Forest. Who would have thought that Soul of the Murloc is better than Soul of the Forest? A 2 mana spell to give your minions death rattle summon a 1 1 Murloc. So, obviously, the first idea is that this goes in Murloc decks. But actually, this can also go in any token decks. So, you could build any kind of token shaman if you find suitable token creators. And you can put in Soul of the Murloc into that. And you can put Bloodlust into that. And then you can hit face. Maybe you could even build a mech shaman around this. I haven't really thought that one so deeply, because those are kind of a little bit more advanced applications of the card. But this card, incredible card, and very, very flexible. Then there's some of that new Murloc support, Underbelly Angler, and this is an incredible Murloc. 2 mana, 2, 3. After you play a Murloc, add a random Murloc to your hand. Like what? That That's crazy good. And then there's Scargill, a legendary Murloc. 4 mana, 4, 4, your Murlocs cost 1. It's a little bit on the slow side, so I'm undecided whether this is great or if it's just mediocre, but when something makes your other cards cost 1, you cannot ignore that. Then there is Muck Morpher, Battlecry transform into a 4, 4 copy of a different minion in your deck. So. Lots of combo potential with this one. Very interesting card. And then more healing for Shaman. So healing did return. Shaman lost a lot, but it gained a lot. Walking Fountain, 8 mana, 4, 8 elemental with Lifesteal, Rush and Wind Fury. So this just comes on the board, clears up a couple of minions and heals you up. Incredible card. Really, this Shaman set is pretty awesome. Because then there's Sludge Slurper. And... It's a Murloc, but don't let that fool you. This is not just a Murloc card. This is probably a card that's going to be run in most Shaman decks. The only Shaman deck that really doesn't want this is a Magmorpher deck, because then you don't want to get a copy of this from your Magmorpher, but if you're having any other Shaman deck, then why wouldn't you play this? 1 mana 2, 1 Murloc, Battlecry, had a Lackey to your hand, Overload 1. You can play it on 1, you can play the Lackey on 2, or you can play this later, you can activate all sorts of overload synergies. Overload 1 is small enough that you can easily recover from that for next turn. That's that's just an incredible card. And then the final two tools are Control Shaman tools, Swamp Queen, Hagata, 7 mana, 5, 5, Battle Cry, 5, 5, Horror 2, and teach it two Shaman spells. So then you have that Horror Rate right cast pair of spells, then you will have Shudder Walk, which is going to have Hagata spell cry and the Horror spell cry and oh, the value, the value is immense. And then a new board, clear spell, hack at the scheme, 5 mana, deal 1 damage to all minions, upgrades each turn. Needs to stay in your hand for a while, but eventually very powerful tool. So this Shaman set, this is a really, really strong set of cards for Shaman. And Shaman needs that. Shaman is at the bottom of the barrel right now in Rastakhan, and this is promising. There are also some neutral cards Shaman might be interested in, such as Archivist Elysiana. I think every control deck is probably going to run this. 8 mana 7 7 battle cry, discover 5 cards, replace your deck with 2 copies of each. So, you're going to fatigue, except haha, you're not going to fatigue, actually, you have 10 cards left in your deck. Or you're facing some corrupted bloods, or you're facing some bombs or something, and haha, you just take them away from your deck. 
what's there not to like. And then this this two drop, this is a great two drop. Two mana two one beast. Hedgeclan Hawk Steed Rush Dead Turtle Summon a 1 1 Murloc. So, token decks, Murloc decks are really interested in this one too. You play it on 2, you trade away your opponent's minion, and you're left with a 1 1 Murloc that you can then use Murloc synergies. And then the Hench Clan Hag, also token decks, Murloc decks. 4 mana 3 3 Battle Cry Summon 2 1 1 Amalgams with all minion types. So, it summons 2 Murlocs for you. And another card that Shaman might be interested in is the Big Bad Arc Mage. 10 mana 6-6 six, six at the end of your turn, summon a random 6 cost minion. This could go into Magmorpha decks. There are two approaches to Magmorpha decks, I will talk about them a little bit later, and this would go into the value approach. But then, I have theory crafted 4 decks for you, so let's go take a look at what kind of decks I believe Shaman might play in Rise of Shadows. The first one is rather unsurprising, Aggro Overlord Shaman. Well, it's already playable in Rustagans Rumble. For this variant I have changed one card. I took away the Argent Squires and I put in Sludge Slurpers instead. Argent Squire is actually probably better on one, especially if you can go Squire into Earth and Might. But Slurper just works extremely well with Thunderhead and just a spectacular card a little bit later in the game. You can find a full guide video to this deck on this channel, but it looks like it's still going to be valid. For Rise of Shadows. The deck that is attempting to contest the position of the Aggro Overlord Shaman as the premium Shaman Aggro deck is Murloc Shaman. Just putting a bunch of Murlocs into the deck, putting a Bloodlust in the deck, profit. Seems like a great plan. This can make use of all sorts of new Murlocs, make use of Soul of the Forest. Ghostlight Angler is still in standard format, so you have that Echo Murloc that you can just slam multiple copies of on the board. There's even some hard removal because Toxfin can give other Murlocs poisonous. And these new token tools, Hench Clan Hogsteed, Hench Clan Hag, go really well with Murlocs because they summon more Murlocs for you. This build is a bit of a mix with overloads, so there's no Doomhammer Rockbiter, there's no Lava Bursts. But there is three copies of Thunderhead, so Thunderhead can be used. With Zaps, Lightning Bolts, with Slurper to create a little bit of these tokens that you can use to trade. And there's also Lickim, because Lickim and those Overlord spells can also be very powerful to get some board control at the start. There would be an alternative to build this sort of token shaman also with something else than Murlocs. That is probably possible. That's something that I'm going to explore later in the expansion. But the main support that's coming right now at all points. To Murlocs. Then going to the combo side, you can build Muckmurfer Shaman. There are two approaches to Muckmurfer Shaman. I actually saw that people had already theory crafted multiple variations of both. So there's the value route. You can have your Muckmurfer, and the Muckmurfer can turn into something like a big bad Archmage, and then at the end of turn, summon a random six cost minion, or Muckmurfer turns into Usera. So you're just trying to get a lot of value going. Also, your Eureka can pull these expensive minions from your hand or copies of them. That's one way to go about with the McMurfer. And the other route is the combo route. And this build is the combo build. Because you can Eureka your Maligos. And then when you have your Maligos on the board, you just zap, 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 zap your opponent to the face with lightning bolts and totem smashes. And they die. So that's fairly effective. You can even get more damage spells with Haunting Visions. You have more chances to get damage spells also from Hagata. So that's sort of a combo deck. Magmurfer can turn into Ziliax or Alakir or Walking Fountain or even Maligos. So lots of things that Magmurfer can turn into. And of course this deck doesn't run any low-end minions in order to enable that Magmurfer. There's also actually a very similar deck recipe to this one. It uses the Arc Mages, it's value oriented, but there are lots of fairly similar builds of this archetype already all over the place. And finally, Control Shaman. Shaman can finally be the premium control class because the value Swamp Queen, Hagata, Hagata the Witch, Shudderwalk. That's so much value. And stuff like Kragwa the Frog and ultimately the Archivist Elysiana to prevent fatigue. And if you face another control deck and they also play their Archivist, then you still have the Archivist Battlecry stored in your Shadow Walk. So you can also 
do that again, then of course your deck will be filled with random cards. If you use Archive Spellcraft from Shadow Walk, but if it gives you 10 cards of fatigue advantage, does it really matter? I'm not yet completely sure how to build this control shaman, because there would be like option to put in Thunderhead into this one to use those overload spells, use that to stabilize. In this build I have opted to go with Doomsayers, but that's not certain by any means. Also I've opted to go with Witch's Brew here, but maybe this should just be Walking Fountain after all. That life's still coming a little bit later, but with a body attached. So lots of questions remain about this archetype, but that value package that this archetype has, then that is incredible. And there has got to be a way to make it work. Overall, Shaman is looking much more promising than it did during Rastakhan, because Aggro Overload is still there, Murlocs or Tokens are coming back, then there's some combo potential with the Magmorpha decks, and then there's just incredible value package with the Control Shaman. So, a lot of interesting Shaman archetypes, really looking forward to playing Shaman in Rise of Shadows. I will go through every class before Rise of Shadows is released, so remember to check back for more theory crafting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.